accompanied in this room of some legendary figures who have shaped Hindi cinema as we know it. But we're also in the company of somebody who's shaping Hindi cinema as future generations will come to know it. In fact, somebody I'm about to invite on stage has really given a new definition to experimental, edgy, cinema that wasn't considered mainstream five years ago, but is now. So please give Radhika Abde a big round of applause. Before we start, there's so many labels that you are you are called, whether that be the face of experimental cinema in India, the face of new phase cinema, even. Um, how do you respond to all these labels that are suddenly given to you? Well, it's flattering, but I don't respond well to any labels <laughs> in general. Uh, so, um, I mean, it, these are very, very good labels, but sometimes what happens is you actually look back and see what you've done so far, which is not a lot, and then you feel that that's probably not even true, and there's a lot more to do, so, yeah. Well, let's rewind back, because actually, your parents weren't very supportive about you going into the movie business, particularly your father had quite a few of apprehensions. I mean, they weren't, they weren't actively supportive, but they weren't, uh, I had my freedom, it wasn't that I had to fight uh, to go anywhere. It, my, I, I come from a very liberal family and uh, it, it was always maintained that I'm free to do whatever I want to do and it's my responsibility and I have to bear the consequences. Um, but just sometimes certain things were said which are not very really encouraging. Uh, so I was told that I'll get depressed at the age of 30, um, which I did, but for different reasons. So, uh, so uh, that wasn't very helpful, but I do understand what, why he thought that. And he had, uh, he was exposed to very limited cinema and he doesn't go watch films really, so he doesn't know much. What was your experience of Hindi cinema particularly uh, prior to going to Mumbai yourself? Well, I think I, uh, I <coughs> see, this, in the beginning when I got exposed to cinema, I was a massive Amir Khan fan and a Shah Rukh Khan fan, and I used to watch the mainstream films, and I wanted to be a part of that. And then as I grew a little older, later, like by my second half of my schooling and my college years especially, I got exposed to completely different cinema. I, and even in India, different cinema, a lot of regional cinema as well, and also world cinema. And uh, I, I, I realized that I wanted to do that. And so it, it's literally like how, it, 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 and, and then I've reached a place where I see merits in both. Um, and I, I see, that as an actor, it's, I mean, it's, it's one thing to watch a film as a, as a viewer and say that this is what I want to be a part of, but as an actor, to be able to portray different things and go in those uncomfortable spaces and try to do things is very challenging. I, I did a couple of, if you want to call them commercial films, if you know what I mean, I don't like to categorize them, but if I did them and I, 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 was, um, I was rude and I, I thought that this is not, this is not my cup of tea and I don't like it. But it was hard work. It was really difficult to do that. And uh, I forgot your question, but... No, my question was, how much were you exposed to Hindi cinema prior to making that move Quite from Mumbai to Mumbai? Quite a lot. But when you did make that move from Mumbai <coughs> to Mumbai, you did struggle a lot as well. In fact, you say that there were times where you had no money to survive, but yet you didn't want to ask your parents for help. Yeah, uh, I still struggle. I think any freelance business you struggle in your life, more or less. Uh, but uh, I didn't ask my parents for money because that was just something that we had. Uh, like, you know, I mean, um, we don't, never got things for free. We had to earn them uh, at home as well. And uh, I was capable of earning money. I, I, just, uh, I just didn't earn enough. Uh, <laughs> but I was trying to find ways of earning money and I thought that you try harder, and then if you really can't make it, fine, last them. But I, I made it. You did, but what was it that was driving you at that point? Because you've spoken a lot about being rejected 
from castings, from being turned down for, for roles. And they, at that point, it wasn't even big roles, it was just a role. But things weren't really going to plan around 2012. You were getting a lot of setbacks. What kept you going at that time? This might sound really cliche, but uh, I was doing theatre, a lot of theatre. I did theatre for 13 years, and I thought I'll only pursue theatre, you know, because I, I really fell in love with that. But then I did my first feature film, which was called Ghomala Asla Hava. It's a Konkani film uh, directed by Sumitra Bhave and Sudhir Suttakar. They're prolific. They're absolutely wonderful uh, writers, directors, and human beings. And uh, I remember there was a scene where my character, who's a 18-year-old girl in Konkan, and she um, is in a conflict in her life, and this guy comes who fixes uh, speakers, and they're having a conversation, she's giving him tea, coming back and going to him and having a conversation, she falls, she's falling in love with the man. Uh, and the scene was shot in one shot. And I remember doing that scene, and instead of falling in love with that man, I was falling in love with the camera, yeah. uh, wow. which was accompanying me throughout. And it was such a comfort. I felt so comfortable that the camera came everywhere I went. And I, instead of feeling intimidated, I felt like, oh my god, if this is there, I can just uh, be vulnerable, actually. I don't know how to explain this. But then, um, since then, I, 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 that, that feeling was so strong that um, I wanted to pursue this. And I never thought of pursuing anything else uh, since then. After that, you did work in four Hindi films as well. There was Rakta Chiritra 1 and 2, there was Shore in the City, and I Am. But you made an overnight decision to go back to Pune. Why was that? No, I never moved to Bombay at that time. I was still in uh, uh, Pune. Um, I made a decision to leave uh, India and go to London to study contemporary dance. Actually, that's how I moved away. Um, why, why make that decision when you were just about getting on that ladder of, of being in recognised films and <laughs> in making a name for yourself? Why then all of a sudden take a break from that? I was very confused at that time. These films happened because of theatre. I was doing theatre and somebody asked me for an, called me for an audition. And um, uh, to be honest, I didn't even have the script. They didn't give me the script to read. So I had no idea what I was doing, but they were paying me enough to buy for, for me to buy a ticket to Zanzibar Music Festival where I wanted to go. <laughs> so that's why I did it. Uh, and um, I was not I was not sure what I wanted to do. I was I was I was a Kathak dancer, and uh, I had just recently been introduced to contemporary dance, and I thought it was fascinating. I I I have learned quite a few other dance forms, but contemporary dance, Laban especially, I just thought that. It changed the way I looked at space around me, and there were corners around me in my sphere or my cube that I was completely unaware of. It blew my mind, and I wanted to go study that. It's just that I was so insecure to leave what I had uh, to actually do that, because I thought, if I have to go, I have to go now. I can't go later on. It's best to go now. But I was too insecure, and then one day I met a friend of mine who, who studied at Trinity Lab in there. And uh, we went dancing in a club and I was just watching her and I was like, I have to do it. It's really um, strange that you saw somebody dancing in a club and you did your friend dancing in a club and you decided you were going to join the dance school here. Yeah, I just needed a trigger <laughs> point and it happened. Are it all happened your decisions like, are spontaneous always, as that? Yeah, I know that's my problem. <laughs> it's, it's, it's working <laughs> so far. <laughs> <laughs> it's working so far. Yeah. What did London teach you professionally and personally? I mean, you talked about discovering these new spaces in, in, in your area, yeah. in your sphere, uh, through learning contemporary dance. But professionally and personally, how did it enhance you when you went back to India? I think three things that were very important to me that London taught me. <laughs> One was that nobody else in the world takes English that seriously. Uh, and it was really very helpful. I come from a Marathi medium school. My father believed that I should be that an entire education should be done in my, your mother tongue. And I didn't speak a word of English till I went to college, and I really struggled, and I had a massive complex. And that sort of also stopped me from going to Bombay, where I didn't speak Hindi or English, and I was not very good at languages. And it was only when I came to London I realized that uh, not everybody else is bothered. Uh, you know, the English is really bad, it's fine. Uh, and Your English is probably better than mine and most people in this room. I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I don't have anything to do with work, but it was a very big learning for me from where I came from and my own issues in life. 
Uh, the other two things were that I had it, I was introduced to Bollywood, and for me it was this ultimate thing. I wanted something, but but when I m met a lot of people who, who had left so many things behind and really taken big risks, and uh, they had higher stakes, and they had come here to pursue their passion, and they didn't exactly have something massive planned ahead of them, but it was just honestly just pursuing that. Um, that that for me was an eye opener, and I, I feel that it's 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 very easy to get carried away by by something and just be in a bubble. But to see actually what we and London is a place where every evening you can go out and watch something incredible, which doesn't really happen in Bombay. So all these things were very very interesting, and I do come from Pune, which was a small town in a way when when I when I, when I was. I lived there, and it, this did open a lot of things uh, for me. But I also valued a certain things about my my life a lot. So all these things. But it was actually your partner at the time who convinced you to give Mumbai another chance. Because yes. if I'm correct, you weren't planning on going back to Hindi cinema at that point, were you? No, I was. You were. Uh, but I some uh, the first time I moved to Bombay, I had a bit of a difficult experience, I just couldn't, I didn't know what, where to start, what to do, and I was a bit of a weakling probably, uh, but I, I could. I didn't want to come back to Bombay, so I was doing everything from Pune, and he convinced me that you can go and, you know, try again. I, I lived there for seven months and it didn't, didn't work out for me, but then I went back and now it's home. Amazing. You know, that journey from then to now seems like a bit of a whirlwind for your audiences, because we've just seen you go from strength to strength. But how were things really playing out at that time? Bud Lovewood was the first role in Hindi cinema where I really noticed you on screen. Uh, I noticed you, I saw you had a great screen presence, you fit this ensemble very well as well. Uh, how did you get that role in Bud Lovewood? Uh, what a oh, my auditioning. Uh, <laughs> as simple as that, because yeah. it's not like when people say, oh, I was approached with this role. No, that no, wasn't no. happening. I just auditioned and I got the part. Okay. <laughs> but it did work wonders for you. It did work for me a lot, yes. I, I became really good friends with Sri Ram, who I love. Uh, I was noticed. Uh, it changed a lot of things for me because I had done show in the city, brought the turn through, and I was completely typecast as somebody who cannot wear anything else but uh, sari. Um, and uh, it, uh, it just, I used to go and meet people like this, and they used to be like, but we need to do a look test. So I was like, fine, I understand, it's fine, it's, it's what they need but it took me a while to get out of that mold. You know, having had that creative liberation when you came to London for a year, having experienced, like you said, the variety of arts and performances, um, why go back to Hindi cinema? Why have to deal with those same egos, those same issues, the same casting problems that you were facing before? You said that London opened you to a new world, but what was still so enticing about Hindi cinema? Well, there are egos here as well. There are egos everywhere. <laughs> Not, not that way. I mean, it opened up because um, there are different art forms that I was exposed to here. Like my husband, he does contemporary improvised music, and I had never heard uh, that music. I remember he invited me for a concert and I YouTubed him, which is such a bad thing to do. And uh, I heard that and I was like, what is this? It's atonal. I can't make... I, I, what is this? Why would you play that? It's like, ugh. And, um, but I still went because I obviously developed a liking for him. And when I went there, I remember I was at the edge of my seat and I came out telling him that I've never experienced something like this before. It was atonal, it was improvised, but I, it, it, uh, it gave, um, like I was imagining things, like I, I was drawn in, in another world. All these things and that passion, you get nothing out of that monetarily or recognition, but you do that for that passion and I, wasn't exposed to that. Uh, that doesn't mean it's not in India. It's there, obviously. It's just that it happened to me here. That's all. That's all. So, so of course I was going to go back and I wanted to do that. How did you bite your tongue though? Because what I want to know is you are somebody who has on several occasions stood up against misogyny in India. You've voiced your opinions about pay parity in the industry and several other issues that affect women in the film industry. Uh, how did you bite your tongue against the misogyny in the industry when, you know, for example, you were rejected from a role for being in, in inverted commas, too fat, which you're definitely not, but that's what the reason was given to you. Uh, I, you know something very honestly, it did hurt 
me at that time, not because it got me fat or anything, it's just because I had two months to lose weight and I, I was going on a holiday and I would have lost weight. That was it. That's what hurt me. But, I mean, you know, if you're a director, what you have in mind and what it is that you're looking for is not for me to judge, really. So, if it was a, there was a reason, because it's out of context and uh, maybe there was a reason why the actor, in, the lead actor needed to be a certain weight or something. So Was that ever explained to you? Uh, not really. But, so that's why I'm saying that this is completely out of context and it's a bit, I would like to be a bit careful about that. I just feel that uh, the pressure that people have to have a certain figure is something that I'm not, uh, I don't feel, I, for, I'm against that. I just, and now that's happening, people, there's, because you need to be represented, we, it, it, you cannot be, you can't have a single dimension, like whatever 30, whatever that, that the figure, uh, to be, rep, to be playing the lead part in a film, uh, it's just ridiculous, it doesn't make any sense to me. So of course, I'm with you in that, and um, you, you, what you, I mean, there's so many things that I, that don't agree with me in the film industry and in the world, of course, but I think you need to fight, you need to choose your battles. Yeah. And when you gain a little bit more power, there's something you can do about that. And you, then you do that. Uh, definitely, I think you should make sure that when you have the authority, you are making something happen, <laughs> that you actually incorporate all those things that you have <coughs> felt that you don't agree with otherwise. But there, even today, so many times, I do things which, are so, which I'm so against, and I just do them because I, I know that if I do that and I get a little bit more power, I probably can change that. And it's a choice I've made. I don't know if it's right or wrong, but... Well, that's a question I'm going to ask you is, do you ever have to compromise any of your morals? For example, you did a film with Rajni Khan, who's more than 35 years older than you. You were romancing him, or he was romancing you on the screen. Is Bollywood ageist? I mean, can't they cast actresses that age opposite Rajni Khan? I think, uh, not just Bollywood, but film industries in India are ageist uh, to, a level, to a point where you do have uh, 60 year old men and you do have, to, they do romance with 18 year olds all the time or 20 something year olds all the time and you do not see it uh, reversed. Uh, so of course I think. Okay, is that something but that changed. challenged your morals at the time when you yeah, were doing that? Yeah, before? it did. I mean, but I'm a huge Rajnikan fan, that doesn't mean that it didn't. <laughs> of course it did. And like that, there are so many other things, like you said, pay parity on many levels. And so many things I don't have, I don't agree with com I, absolutely. But if I stop myself from uh, working, uh, if, I, if I know that the lead actor is getting more money than me, again, I have a different point of view on that, if you ever want to entertain that. But I would love to hear it. So this is about men getting more money. Please, please tell me. No, I think, I think it's, see, if, 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 a, if a Salman Khan is going to bring 200 uh, crores, and I'm going to bring, bring not even one, then he is going to get more money uh, paid, you know what I mean? It's, so it's not a blanket rule, but I, I think what, what, what um, so that, and that will take time to change, and we are trying to change that. It has to be vice versa, society has to change, and we have to say, we are part of the society, you can't exclude ourselves. But I think what is the problem here is, suppose there's a lead actor, and for example, the parents of the lead actor, Ma or Ba, like you know, dad and father and mother. They're two equally talented, well-known actors. They're working as hard and require are required for the same number of days, but they will not be paid the same amount of money. So if, if the ninety-nine percent of your cast, which is not actually affecting your box office, is not paid equally, so I think that's a bigger concern for me. Uh, I, I think, but uh, anyway, so I I do things which are I don't agree with. And I hope that I can contribute to a change eventually. So really, you were doing those things you didn't agree with, so that hopefully you would get to a point where you have a certain level of influence, where you can be a decision maker, where you can be a, level, a, re a revolutionary, which is what we're celebrating here at the UK Asian <coughs> Film Festival. So what are the causes that you want to champion in the Indian film industry? I'm, I'm talking pan-India here, because you do work in regional cinema as well. I, I, there's so many, I guess, uh, uh, representation uh, for women in not just, uh, of course, not as actors, but every field. Uh, then um, representation for languages and people from every part of the country. Uh, subjects, I, I think, having the freedom to, the creative freedom to uh, explore different subjects. Um, uh, pay parity, definitely. Uh, then we, we, not, we must talk about Me Too, having, uh, having a safe environment for every gender uh, 
to work. All these things, I think. Do you feel like it's a safer environment than it was five years ago when you were starting out? I think so. Do you think the Me Too movement in India since September last year has made any impact on the way women are treated on set? Um, I hope so, and I think so. Um, I mean, very honestly speaking, I have never experienced this in the last five years. I, so it's difficult to say whether that one within that one year has have things changed on set. But I think so, definitely, people will think twice before doing anything. And people also are aware that <coughs> this is wrong and that they can actually stand up for uh, themselves and actually there will be people who will support and uh, listen to you and this needs to be spoken about. Uh, so these things are definitely, this, this has definitely helped. I think that the things, are, things will change, I, I really hope so. Going back to around 2015 and when Budlap were released, um, there was an emerging market at the same time, which was the digital space. There were streaming services who were now looking at India to try and capitalize and, and really take advantage of that huge market. Do you remember the first time you were approached to star in something that was being made for the digital world? Uh, because now you're the queen of it, Radhika. Whether you'd like to admit it or not, you're the unofficial poster girl for Netflix in India. <laughs> uh, they make memes about you, they yeah. post loads of stories about you. You star in three very well known original products from Netflix Lost Story, Sacred Games, and Ghoul. Uh, do you remember when you were first approached to collaborate with them? Uh, actually, Ghoul and Lost Stories was not really. Uh, when, when, when we conceived, the ideas were conceived and we shot. The films wasn't really with Netflix, so I, I, I mean, I have no feelings for that. But I'm glad that it uh, it actually streamed on Netflix because the reach was amazing. The the number of people saw it was amazing, and I I don't think that the equal number of people would have seen it if it it were to release on uh, screens. I'm talking about cool. Um, and uh, also, it was an audience from across the world, not just. India, so I, I think that's that's really great. Uh, the first time I was approached was for a show called Casting Couch. Uh, <laughs> it's a funny show. It's really funny if you speak Marathi. Uh, but my friends uh, started this channel called Bhadi Pav, which is the first in Marathi digital channel. And uh, there's a round of applause up there for oh, that. It's a great show. It's a really funny show. And that experience that was, time, was yeah. good enough for you to want to continue in the digital There's world. no difference in experience. You know, you, you say that, but where we sit as audience members, there is a clear distinction in what we're given on digital platforms like Netflix and Amazon Prime and what we are given in cinemas. For example, uh, Shabana Azmiji was speaking about Zoya a moment ago, Made in Heaven, which is a new show she's done for Amazon Prime, is far superior to a lot of the content we're seeing on the big screen. So, did you feel creatively liberated when you were working with Netflix on Sacred Games? I, I understand what you're saying, and I do understand that maybe that content is difficult to make in film with the whole other reasons, we, we all know why. But that doesn't make it superior necessarily. A simple story told in a film can be equally great in quality, and which is why I'm saying that the satisfaction can be the same. and. When I say it's not different, what I mean is the actual filming process, I'm given a character and I'm supposed to portray it and I'm putting the same amount of effort. So whether it's going to be screened uh, on a film or digitally showcased, it's not something that I have in my mind all the time when I'm, when I'm filming for it. You know what I mean? That's yeah. what I mean. So I've never really thought about platforms. I, when I did a short film and that became quite a success, they asked me, are you not afraid to do short films? So why would I be? I mean, it doesn't matter if it's good content. If something excites you, do it. I don't think about the platform. Let's talk about Padman, which was a huge commercial success last February when it released. And this was a film, the first mainstream Hindi film to talk about menstrual health. Were you at all apprehensive about how firstly mainstream audiences would react to it? And secondly, whether Bollywood would trivialize the subject? No, Bollywood was making it. <laughs> Bollywood was making it, but um, there's always there's always a worry that Bollywood dumbs down subjects for a certain audience. Um, yeah, I mean, I um, I actually thought that the setup was perfect. Perfect as in both for they have, I think Balki had immense clarity on what he wants to do and why he wants to do it, and I think what he chose in order to do what he wanted to do was perfect. 
He wanted this subject to be discussed. He wanted families to come together and watch a film on menstruation on and he wanted to be, people to be aware of the fact that people aren't using pads and why they should be used and why this subject should be talked openly. Uh, he, he achieved that. Uh, he, he wanted to do it in a way where it doesn't alienate people but actually makes it easier for them to approach the subject. He did that <coughs> and he wanted somebody to re represent that topic or, or that film who people uh, relate to uh, on screen um, the most and he did that. So I think it all was absolutely perfect for what he was trying to achieve and which is why I was for, uh, completely on board with you. And it certainly worked for you last year. Both your uh, two releases, your big commercial releases, certainly Padman and Underdun, did tremendous business. Have they helped break the stereotype around Radhika Abde in Hindi cinema? Do you think that you're now uh, more viable as a commercial actress in Hindi cinema because of those two films? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, yes. Maybe, but uh, I mean, definitely better than what I was four years ago. But um, I don't know yet, actually. But I don't think as much it has, has changed as much as continuing to be very frank. But I please, be, please uh, be frank. really don't to be think frank. it's changed as much as I would have liked it to have changed. Why is that? That's, uh, I'm figuring it out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know why, because um, I, 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 I don't know. But I, it, it's, it's, it's still, I, it t still takes convincing people that I can uh, play a more urban part or a more uh, glamorous part. And then you, when I'm trying to convince people for, of that, then I actually ask myself, do I want to work with people who I have to convince? But uh, yeah, so I'm not sure it's changed as much, but it will change. I'm sure I'll make it change. You know, the past decade has been incredible for your success. Your, your journey has been really, really interesting. And strangely enough, it's your first role that you ever did that you still consider to be your best and your favorite. Yeah, why, why is that? I mean, you've done so much work over the past decade. What was it that was so special about that one? I forgot about my gender completely in that film. I think that's what is so special about that film. I was very innocent. Um, I, I do feel uh, that um, there's so, much, so many things we speak about at the moment about women and empowerment, and it's so crucial, and I, I want to be a part of everything, and I want to be... I, want to be a part of that change and fight for our, for everything. But uh, that was one film where it was assumed, the equality was assumed. And that that's why there was this ama amazing innocence uh, to that film and that character. Because a lot of times when I'm approached uh, at the moment with films and with all due respect, um, and I would, I, of course I want to do those films, it's about fighting for your rights. It's about making a change. It's about saying that this is not good enough. Whereas this first character I played, this 18-year-old girl in a village, she didn't know any better. She knew that it was, I, I am entitled to all this. And she always believed that this was equal, but everything around us was not, but for her it was. And uh, she just uh, fought her battle, not really understanding that this has to be changed because she just believed in that. It was such a great belief that how can things be other way? Otherwise, you know what I mean? Uh, does that make sense? It does, because I think most of us are now going to go Google this film, find it, and watch it. So. It's beautiful. It's, 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 a, it's a really well-written and made film. Amazing. Radhika, it has been an absolute pleasure having you here at the UK. <laughs> Before you leave, though, we do have Shay and Melissa, two very young fans.